Well, they signed Von Miller to that massive contract. They wanted a finisher. They wanted a guy that could make an impact late in games. A sack makes it fourth down and a mile as we welcome you to Orchard Park with two minutes left in a four-point game. Kirk Cousins back to throw on fourth and 18. He's given time. He wants Jefferson. Climbs the ladder. Oh, my goodness. Justin Jefferson pulled it in. The catch of his life keeps the Vikings' hopes alive. There's no way. We had a catch earlier this game by Stephon Diggs, one-handed going up. That has been replaced by Justin Jefferson's catch, especially with what was at stake. An all-timer for Jefferson, and now it's Thielen. On time from Cousins, a flag down on top of it. Benford ripped him out, and a flag flew in at the last moment. But we got to look back at this. How does he maintain possession all the way through not allow that ball to hit the ground and he just steals After it play, from cam lewis foul, unnecessary roughness defense number 47 that's a 15 yard penalty automatic first down justin jefferson the leading receiver in the nfl since he debuted makes a massive catch this is the penalty so 15 yards on top of the reception for Thielen. Moves the ball down inside the 20. They had it fourth and 18, and then Justin Jefferson pulled a magic act. And again, this is only a four-point game because of a missed extra point. Vikings need a touchdown. Cousins steps up. Jefferson inside the five. First and goal, Minnesota. And now the Bills got to start thinking about the clock. They've got all three timeouts. Seventh catch for one bad man. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. I mean, absolutely unbelievable. To get through Terry Johnson, you know you're going to get hit by Cam Lewis when you catch it. And he has been phenomenal. And, and again, he had a tremendous first half. All of a sudden, he kind of disappears the majority of the second half until this drive. Two of the seven catches for 151 yards for a guy who's always going to be linked to this Bills franchise. He was the return on the Diggs trade, at least the pick that the Vikings used to select Jefferson. From down 27-10, to 27-23 in first and goal. Osborne in motion. Cousins is tripped. Second time today that one of his linemen has tripped him up. It's Ed Ingram again. I, I don't know. He's over a little bit to the right. But watch your right guard. He's coming inside. Steps right on top of Kirk Cousins' foot. That's the second time. This is back in the first half. First drive of the game. And boy, the Vikings just don't like making things simple, do they? Nothing easy this year. They might be 7-1, and one, but they have done it the hard way. This would be the hardest way yet. One timeout left for the Bills. Second and goal for the Vikings. Top of the screen down comes Dalvin Cook in motion. Justin Jefferson up at the top. Cousins looking his way. Kirk Cousins back of the end zone and incomplete. Jackson with the coverage on Jefferson. Third and goal with a minute square. Really nice job in coverage again by Dane Jackson. And they've been there all day long. Christian Benford. Dane Jackson, guys that have been asked to step up in expanded roles with all these injuries in the secondary for the Buffalo Bills. They just keep rolling guys out, and they just keep playing really well.
officials timeout for a medical timeout. Well, we saw that earlier as T.J. Hawkinson left as they checked him for a concussion. Let's see who they take off here. And nobody comes off of the field in this instance. Third down and goal for the Vikings with a minute left. Kirk Cousins, can he do it again? It's Jefferson again! It's a touchdown! The comeback kids have done it again! And it's Cousins to Jefferson again. One last time to give him the lead with 54 seconds. Working on the outside, he's coming underneath. Let's see if he completes this all the way through. And was he in? I think the catch is good. Was he in, though, as Christian Benford brought him down right away? Knees down. Yeah, he's, a, he's short. Is he on top of Christian Benford, or did the knee get down? So the knee's clearly right down. Yep. It's just a question of where the ball is. Tough to tell from that angle, but it does look to be short. No question about whether or not he held on. No question about whether or not he's down. Here's going to be your best look if he's in when he is down. And he's not. This is going to be fourth and goal. After review, it is a completion. But the receiver is down at the one half yard line. And it'll be fourth down and goal from the fourth. Buffalo has asked for a timeout. Timer, please reset the game clock to 57 seconds. 57. Buffalo is charged with their third and final timeout. The Bills use their last timeout to make sure this clock doesn't keep running. Fourth down and goal with 57 seconds. Amazing job. We, we've seen it all day long. The, comp the competition on the outside today has been some of the best I've seen. The defense has won battles at times. The offenses have won battles at times. And it all comes down to this. It, it, this is by far the best game that, that we've been a part of so far this season. Fourth down, less than a yard. The game comes down to this. Cousins to throw. Cousins has Cook. He dropped the ball. Delvin Cook drops the ball. There is a flag down as well. Offside. Wow. Number 97. That penalty is half the distance to the ball. Replay. Fourth down. Well, it's going to be one of two things, right? A huge jump, or he was offside. And he was offsides, and they get another shot. Yep, definitely. So now, it's fourth down and goal an inch away. Another chance for the Vikings. Cousins to sneak it. Can he break the plane? Is he in? No signal yet. Still waiting. He's short. They slam the door. You're that close to the line. We've seen so many times you get that push from behind. Here comes CJ Ham. What a great job by that Bills down front. The previous play is under review. And this is certainly going to be worth taking a really close look at. Are you going to be able to see if Kirk Cousins is down before he extends across the goal line? He was talking to the official at the end of that play saying he had extended and broken the plane. Could be a good this will be the here. best angle right there. The shoulders, the shoulder is going to be down. 
And that football's right there. I think it's short. He's going to move it late. He's already down. Well, it doesn't get any bigger than this for the replay booth. Dean Blandino, what do you think? Looking for a shot that shows us the football when his left shoulder is down. We've had some good looks, but I don't think we've got enough to change this. The ruling on the field was short. I don't see anything clear that the ball is breaking the plane at that point. To me, this has to stand. What a game. What a finish. Vikings had a touchdown that was overturned with a review at the goal line. They said Justin Jefferson was short. And now they're hoping for a reversal in the other direction. They say that the quarterback sneak falls just short. As this Bills defense done just enough. Hard to argue with a play call. I mean, he needed an inch. Now, how many times have we seen that this season, th this new way of doing that quarterback sneak? You know, not not like most teams where the motion is right behind the quarterback, but you've got C.J. Ham lined up within five yards, and he comes up and he tries to help Kirk Cousins from behind be able to push him into the end zone. But what a fantastic job by that interior of the Bills defense. We talk about Vaughn Miller and these edge rushers. The on the field stands as called. It'll be Buffalo first down. There it is. But Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean did a great job going out seconds. and getting some big bodies inside to help out Ed Oliver, Jordan Phillips, Phillips Tim Settle, Daquan Jones. Those are the guys in that situation that give you the opportunity, the ability to keep a quarterback out in that, on that sneak. And that was football in its purest form right there. Low man wins. Game on the line at the goal line. Not simple here for Allen and the Bills. Hey, alert it. Alert it. Alert it. Zero breathing room. He tries to sneak it. The ball is loose. Impossible. Do the Vikings have it? Scramble for the ball. A fumbled snapper and a touchdown for the Vikings. This is unbelievable. I mean, you think about taking a safety right there. It's going to get you to 27 25, and then you got a punt and play defense. So you go with the with the quarterback sneak. Just a bad quarterback center exchange. I don't know if it was it looked like it got back farther than normal. The previous play is under review. And they're gonna review it. We've yeah. lived a full life down at the goal line here over the last five minutes. I think the big thing now is is if Eric Kendricks makes this recovery, number 54, is he in the end zone or is it outside? So does Minnesota's offense have to come on the field and run another play? It sure looks like he's inside that goal line. Yeah, this review seems like a much simpler one. I mean, it's one of the most simple things you do in the game of football the quarterback center exchange now there's a ball sitting right on the goal line and at that point it's in if he falls on top of it now the vikings i mean they were finished they were stopped on fourth and goal from inside the one. If you didn't think this season was charmed, if you didn't think there was something special going on for the Vikings before, impossible to deny that there's something magical about this Vikings team at this point. Even if it stands, 37 seconds for Josh Allen and the Bills. But you're going to get second-guessed on this the whole time, backed up like that. You know, people will say, should you have taken the safety? 
and punted it away and played defense. That gets you to 27-25. Now a field goal can beat you coming back the other way. So it makes sense to execute the simplest play yeah. in football, which is the quarterback sneak, just to get a little bit off your goal line and then run this clock out. I think it's easy to say now, wow, maybe you should have taken it, but right. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean it, it, it seems like it never got to Josh Allen's hands there. It looked like it was shorted. From behind, it looks like it gets there. The ruling on the field stands as called. It is a touchdown, Minnesota. Timer, please reset the game clock to 41 seconds. 41, thank you. These teams continue to take turns defying logic here down the stretch. What an unbelievable last, I don't know, 30 seconds of game time. So much packed into it. And now an extra point, which has not been a sure thing for Greg Joseph. He's got this one. But Josh Allen and the Bills have 41 seconds, and all they've got to do is get in the field goal range. Absolutely stunning. It'd be stunning enough of a finish just in a vacuum. But then you consider that this was 27-10. And then you figure at some point, Kevin O'Connell's team's got to run out of magic. At some point, a deficit's going to be too large for him to overcome. But they've overcome another. Fourth and 18. The catch by Justin Jefferson. He, 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 the Bills make a stop, and you think you're done. Right here. I mean, this, this is fourth and half a yard. And just a tremendous job by the interior of the Bills defensive line and, and then Minnesota returns it you've got the botch snap but look at Eric Kendricks coming through there knife and nobody gave up there hasn't been one player on this field that felt the game was over it was out of their hands they just continued to grind and grind and they were always there when the moment to make a play presented itself yeah both sides better keep on grinding because it's still hidden over far from it 41 seconds in eternity for this offense. Joseph kicks it. Luke Johnson has had a nice day returning. It's time to cover it sharp, and they're at the 21-yard line to begin this drive. 36 seconds. Josh Allen, there was a question if he'd even play this week. He has played. He's been exceptional. 23-35 for 261. A touchdown in his usual scampering self. Amazing some of the plays he's extended on third downs. He's made great decisions. His supporting cast has really stepped up. That's the one positive with the Bills offense today. It hasn't been a one-man show. It hasn't just been Stephon Diggs. Trying to get into field goal range. They're out of timeouts. First play, Dawson Knox, a good one. Again, a 13 to the 33. Well, Tyler Bass has hit from 58 in his career as a few years ago as a rookie. His long this year is 51. So they're looking to get around the 35-yard line to feel like they've got a good shot. For once, conditions here pretty still. This place is known as a wind tunnel, but not much wind to speak of as Bass gets ready. 29 seconds from the 32. Again, it's Knox with a one-handed catch, and he's out of bounds with 24 seconds. About 25 yards from his range. Yeah, and there a, is an injured Viking. And the hard part here is you talked about that wind, and, and I actually talked to Tyler Bass before the game, and he said the hard thing here... An injury inside two minutes requires a timeout. This is Minnesota's third and final charge timeout is when you look at the flags at the top of the stadium, they could be going in one direction. When you look at the ribbon on the top of the goalpost, it could be still or going in a different direction. And he said, what I like to do is I like to get out. And it gets in and it swirls. He goes, I'll go with the way the wind feels to me on the field. That's going to be the one. I don't want to look up and get confused with all the different directions because no, it's never going to show you exactly how it should be. The winds will be blowing in different directions depending on the flags and the ribbons on the uh, on the goalposts. So he goes, I've got to trust how I feel it down here on the field. Injury play here for the Vikings, Darius Smith. That's no small deal. Very good pass rusher. You can't even uh, rip up some blades of grass and toss it in the air to test it. So 
So they're at their own 40. Need to get around the 35 in Vikings territory. 24 seconds, no timeouts. That's Diggs motioning across the formation. Allen looking the other way. Gabe Davis diving try and catch to the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 20. Did he corral it? Looks like a good catch. They're within about five yards of comfortable field goal range, and they're going to get it here. McKenzie looking for the sideline, and he's got it with 11 seconds down to the 25. And now you can think about winning this game. He started to go into the middle of the field, <laughs> and you're like, no! This is amazing by Gabe Davis, he, and he does it. They hustled up to the line. He's going to secure it. He's going to get his arms underneath. Ooh, is that a little bobble? Wow. But they hustled. They got to the line of the scrimmage. Now, this is you're what you started to go inside, Isaiah. 11 seconds, no timeouts from the 25. Allen, given time, lost one to the end zone and incomplete. There's a flag. It's going to go on the rookie booth. Got a hold of Gabe Davis. Pass interference, defense, number 23. The ball replaced at the spot of the foul, automatic, first down. All right, five seconds. Is that enough time to go for the end zone again? Well, we always went at six seconds. I think once you go to five, if anything goes wrong, you're in trouble. You've got no timeouts. And here's that Gabe Davis catch again on the sideline. Does he get his arms underneath? Does he get it cradled? I don't think right there it looks like he has lost possession. Wow. And so that 20-yard completion, it stood. They played quickly. And two plays later, they got a chance to send it into overtime. From 29 yards, it's Tyler Bass. And he hooks it through. Tied at 30 with two seconds left. What a ball game. Yeah, and that 41 seconds to start the drive, it just felt like an eternity for Josh Allen in this offense. This has been the most amazing two minutes of football I have ever seen in my entire life. What has happened, what has transpired in these two-minute plays? Tremendous individual efforts from offensive players, defensive players, the execution. Kevin O'Connell thought that he had missed that. You don't blame him for thinking something crazy might have happened. But it looks like this is headed for overtime. Wow, wow, wow. Wow play after wow play. Games looked like it was over multiple times. It looked like it was over late in the third quarter with the Bills up three scores. It looked like it was over with the Vikings getting stopped at the goal line. And it looked like it was over with the Vikings taking the lead. And the Bills rally down and tie the game with two seconds. And so Kirk Cousins in the offense back to the field here. Let's see if they just going to kneel on it or see what they can do here with one last play. And shuttle for overtime. And oh man, Kevin O'Connell in his first year as a head coach. He has had some thrillers that he's tried to guide his team through. The seven and one Vikings and the six and two Bills are headed for overtime. And Bills fans know a little something about overtime. Coin toss we'll get in just a moment here. Both teams are going to have an opportunity to possess the ball unless that first possession results in a touchdown. It's a 10-minute quarter. And the Bills, of course, on the wrong end 
of one of these overtime sessions to end their season in Kansas City last year. In the postseason, as a result of that, this year, that rule is going to be a little bit different. Both teams are going to get a shot regardless of that first drive. Here we go. We will now begin a maximum of a 10 minute overtime period. Both teams will have the opportunity to possess the ball unless the team first in possession gets a touchdown, there's a defensive score, or the team first in possession keeps the ball for all 10 minutes. Fourth quarter timing rules apply. Both teams are allowed two timeouts, and replays will be initiated from the replay booth. Any questions? You're the visiting team. NFL Shield is heads. Red, white, and blue side is tails. What is your call? Tails. Called tails. It is tails. You won the toss. You'd like to receive. Which way you want to kick? Which way do you want to kick, Buffalo? Okay. Vikings win the toss. The look for the touchdown and the night. Well, well, we get extra football in this one. 30 to 30. Can anybody handle that? Can anybody handle more of this? <laughs> what a game it's been. 7 1 Vikings trying to validate that 7 1 start, looking for a signature win. It would be yet another comeback win. The Bills trying to go to 7 and 2. Vikings with the all important win of the coin toss. And so they've got over the chance to win this game with a touchdown. We're going to bring our rules expert, Dean Blandino, and looking back to one of the last plays of regulation. Dean, should this have been stopped on this, what was ruled a completion to Gabe Davis? Absolutely. 20 yard completion. We're in the last two minutes of the fourth quarter. No coaches challenge. That has to come from the replay booth. And this is too big a play not to stop. And as you can see on this shot, Gabe Davis. Davis is going to the ground. He does get his knees down in bounds, but he doesn't maintain control. The ball hits the ground, comes loose. That's an incomplete pass. Two plays later, Bills tied the game and forces overtime. Vikings try to make it a moot point. A touchdown would win it. Dalvin Cook had an 81-yard touchdown earlier today to trigger the comeback, and he's got a nice gain in the first play of the OT. We got to get back to Vaughn Miller, too. He was the one who really had kind of taken over that game at the end. Got him into that fourth and 18 situation. Can, can he do something here for this Bills defense? Go back to what you were doing before. I mean, he was really starting to have an impact on that game late in the fourth quarter. They had a sack that made it fourth down and 18. Looked like it was finished then. Then Jefferson with a one-handed catch. And so much since. Cook again. Delvin Cook gets eight. 18 yards on the first two plays of the overtime for Cook, who's over 100 for the day. And that's a great job because it didn't look like there was a whole lot there for Delvin Cook. And to get him in a second and short situation, do they become a little bit aggressive here and take a shot down the field? You know who they'd love to take that to. Justin Jefferson, another monster day. Play action with his eyes downfield. Heaves it for Jefferson's sideline. Did he get him down? He did into Bills territory. Kirk Cousins, as he's getting hit, whips that ball across his body. Here's the top of the route. Leaning to the inside. Gets outside of Dane Jackson. But this is all Kirk Cousins. This is phenomenal. He's got Ed Oliver bearing down on him. I don't even know how he got enough on that. I don't know how could be the uh, title of the story <laughs> of the Vikings in 2022. Or the last two minutes of this game in the start of overtime. From the 43, a touchdown wins it. Flag down. And a false start. False start. Offense. Number 64. Five-yard penalty. First down. And that's Blake Brandle again who's in the game because Christian Derrissaw is out. Kevin O'Connell trying to become just the seventh coach ever to win eight of his first nine games as a head coach. 37 years old, the right touch for this Vikings team this year.
Cousins in trouble. That one flutters. That was a backwards pass. And the Vikings are lucky Cook thought to get on top of it. A.J. Epinesa got to Cousins. I mean, that was literally right down the yard line from our booth, and it was definitely backwards after the deflection. I don't know if it's the wind that moves it that way, because <laughs> it wasn't at the beginning of that throw. He was trying to get it forward, but it's definitely blown backwards. A slider over there, second and 22. Cousins into traffic and incomplete. Flags fly. Christian Benford covering Justin Jefferson. Pass interference. Defense number 47. The ball will be placed in the spot of the foul. First down. He's working with Adam Thielen at the release, but is able to drop back and help out with Justin Jefferson, just gets there early, makes contact. Again, you, you, you don't have your eyes back. You're not tracking the football. Justin Jefferson, 170 yards today, including an iconic catch to keep their hopes alive in the fourth quarter. From the 36-yard line, with a fresh set of downs, here comes Delvin Cook. Cook cuts it back. Delvin Cook a first down to the 25. He's had all kinds of room in this OT. Really nice vision by Delvin Cook because you, you, a lot of times this play is going to the edge. He sees the blocking up front and really winds it all the way back to where the play started. Everybody said prove it seven and one but prove it go into Buffalo and do what you've been doing Vikings trying to do just that touchdown would win it cousins floating Osborne incomplete coverage from Johnson And you know the other part about that prove it theory if Josh Allen doesn't play and they come here and they win They're still not going to get credit for it. They're going to get the same thing. They said about Miami you beat Miami but Tua wasn't starting that day. Yeah, they got Allen and they got Buffalo full strength. If you wanted a signature win and the Minnesota Vikings pull this off, you, you've you got it. They are legit at 8-1 and one and there are no more questions to be answered. I think regardless of the outcome, you got to say they're legit at this point, huh? Right, it's not necessarily the outcome anymore. Just the way they've bounced back, the resiliency that they have playing against what many consider to be the Super Bowl favorite. Here comes Cook. The hole was plugged, and he was dropped. Boogie Basham there first, and then Oliver and Phillips. And it's third and long. Some of those guys inside again, Ed Oliver, Jordan Phillips, those big bodies that they brought in to create these passing situations. The third and long so they can turn Vaughn Miller loose off the edge. Josh Allen hoping for his chance. Timeout, Minnesota. First overtime charge timeout, Minnesota. This is a 30-second timeout. Now both teams get two timeouts in the overtime, so one of them left for Minnesota. we got two superstar receivers in this game, and both have had <laughs> remarkable catches. Diggs the one-hander in the third quarter. When it looked like the Bills were going to cruise, and then Jefferson on fourth down and 18, an impossible catch to keep Minnesota's hopes alive. He takes that ball out of Cam Lewis's hands with one hand. Cam Lewis has got two hands up. And Justin Jefferson falling to the ground, pulls it from him with one hand. Is he the guy again here? Nine catches for 170 yards. They might need him again on third and ten. Jefferson up at the top, defended by Dan Jackson. Cousins steps into it, wants Jefferson and has him. First down and goal for the Vikings. 
Justin Jefferson shows up again, 24 yards. Again, the coverage is pretty darn good. Watch this, he's underneath, but he just can't get his head around fast enough. It's late right there. And Kirk Cousins is, is putting these balls in unbelievable locations. Letting it rip and trusting that he's got one of the best in the world out there waiting on it. Career high, 194 yards for Justin Jefferson. Will Josh Allen get a chance? Vikings again on the doorstep. It's Delvin Cook pulled down in the backfield. Matt Milano this time. Nice job by Matt Milano right there. And that was one of the things that Kevin O'Connell shared with us. We talked to him about getting the run game going, and he said, hey, I know a lot of people talk about it, but last week they didn't have Matt Milano. You, know, you, you watched when they struggled a little bit. He's not in there on that side of the ball. He felt like the return of Matt Milano, they were going to eliminate a lot of those issues. Play clock down to three. On second and goal, Cousins looks to throw. He is set back in the 15. And Oliver. And it's third and goal. It's been the interior guys making all the plays late fourth quarter and early here in overtime. There's that D line for the Bills that slammed the door at the end of regulation. Here they're trying to get the ball back to their superstar quarterback. Third down and goal. Cousins in zone, incomplete. And the Bills have forced a field goal. Once again, Darrell, the Vikings had it down inside the five, had a chance to finish the job, and couldn't. Big plays by the Buffalo defense, a tackle for a loss on the run, the sack by Ed Oliver after that. And so it's Greg Joseph for a 33-yarder. He's missed an extra point today. Vikings take the lead. Kevin O'Connell's team leads for the first time since it was 7-0. One drive into this game. They trailed 27-10. And they have scored first in this overtime. But they had a chance to finish it with a touchdown and couldn't get it in. Yeah, we, we have seen both of these offenses get in position where it looked like they were going to take charge, you know, during the course of the game. And in that situation... That you're talking about that first down at the two yard line and, and just the the next two snaps by buffalo's defense just so impressive a tackle for loss on a run a sack and we saw how how disappointed josh allen was we go to the shot on the sideline he even thinks that he's not going to get another shot to get out there duke johnson said a big return today duke johnson crosses the 25 335 to go and Josh Allen will get that opportunity. We'll all get that opportunity as football fans and fans of the game of the year in the NFL. 27 out of 39, within 300 yards on a day where nobody even knew if he'd play. I don't know who's going to win, but we know officially here these are two of the best in the NFL. 7-1 and one Vikings, 6-2 and two Bills, 3.5 left in overtime. Josh Allen to throw. He's in trouble. Josh Allen keeps it alive and runs for a first down. Lowering his shoulder for 17 yards to the 46. I mean, he's just so hard to tackle. And it's one of those things that everybody talked about with your rush plan. Yeah, I, I've gotten to Josh Allen, but what do I do then? Look at him pull away from those defensive linemen and then how he finishes the run. There's some things you just you get up and you go, that, that was awesome. You know, let's line up and play another snap. I don't know what else we can do. <laughs> nice job, man. That was impressive. From the 46, Allen given time. 
Coverage downfield, good, so he's going to do what he does. Runs again, lowers the shoulder again, inside the 35. Infield goal range with 240. All right, he's in the secondary, right? So you think this is a defensive back? This is Eric Kendricks, the linebacker. He was downfield guarding the tight end. And he drags him for seven yards. You're in the two-minute warning of overtime. Quick throw underneath. It's Diggs. He gets six or seven. And that does bring it to the two-minute warning. Vikings settle for a field goal on their drive. Tied for the best record in the AFC. The two losses in the division, the Dolphins and the Jets. Still 6-2. and two. And in this thriller of a game, trying to win it here. Here's Diggs. Stephon Diggs to the 20. And a first down for the Bills. Touchdown wins the game for Josh Allen in Buffalo. Just going back and forth between Justin Jefferson and Stephon Diggs all afternoon. Yeah, Jefferson, the career high of 194. Diggs with a 12 catch day from the 20 yard line. Inside a minute and a half. Allen lets it go. In zone! Shelley making his Vikings debut today going really deep onto that depth chart at corner knocks it away from Dawson Knox so watch how he plays this at the end see how he's sideways he's able to look back and find the football and how many times have we seen during the course late in the fourth quarter early here in overtime some of the players Getting their heads turned around and not being able to make that play back on the football and and people are going to talk about the contact there That's been consistent all day these throws into the end zones the officiating crews have let them battle it out Second and ten Allen steps up and throws an interception Patrick Peterson and in this heavyweight bout the Vikings with the knockout blow the Vikings win Second pick for Peterson ends this one in overtime. And I don't know what he sees. He's got him underneath. There's no reason to make that throw. That that is the fourth red zone interception in the last two weeks for Josh Allen. It's just I mean he had two in the previous what 67 games. Yeah. And he's had four in the last two weeks.